gunmen killed six family members in Oshun, opened fire vehicle in Ikite, killed one, attacked police base in Bauchi, killed two, and killed JSS two students in Plateau. Mm. Oh, puzzle. And security, I mean, uh, Kaduna is in the eye of the storm these days. Kaduna has managed to become the, the real epicenter of these banditry attacks, uh, you know. Um, in as much as we look at Sanfara and be worried, you know, about the way they are attacking schools in Sanfara. Kaduna is still the worst place. Everywhere, everything in Kaduna, somebody is killed, an attack happens, somebody is kidnapped, someone is paying one ransom. It's rampant. It's rampant all over Kaduna. The governor tells you that he's trying his best, you know, and he's going after these bandits. Uh, but there, there's no day. I mean, we, we saw the story of the kidnap of uh, the students, mostly girls, mm -hmm. uh, of the f f forestry school, mm -hmm. f forestry college, you know, and the, and there were 30 of them were left. The, the their kidnappers released the video, you know, torturing them, them, beating them, or flogging them. Most of the girls were still mm -hmm. in their, their night clothes. Mm -hmm. You know, it is dehumanizing, you know, to say the least. And then there was an attempt at another school that was foiled, and then found quarters near the airport, second attempt in a couple of days. You know, it's just rampant. The, 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 the bandits are so emboldened. You wonder how come they're not afraid. That's my they question. Will... Well, what is giving them that brazenness? Because they, because they know they will do it and walk away. Because they know they can enter a federal mechanical school and take 300 students and Nothing walk away. Nothing will happen. Because they know that nothing will happen. Kaduna, as it is, is Nigeria's military bastion, surrounded by military formations everywhere you look. I mean, it's a place where, I, when my when I was young, my father used to go to travel to Kaduna all the time. Yeah. He's going to range in Kaduna. Everywhere in Kaduna, the three divisions of the Nigerian Army is there. The Nigerian Military School, the Nigerian Defense Academy, uh, the School of Infantry is there. Uh, the artillery range is in Kachia and Southern Kaduna. They, they have a depot in Nigeria. I mean, it's just surrounded by military formations. Yet, Kaduna is in the hour storm of this violent bandit crisis. But Zamfara is bad, but I think Kaduna is worse. Given again, uh, the, the the central position of Kaduna to Abuja. The Kaduna Abuja Highway, we don't talk about it enough, but we all agreed here that that's one of the most dangerous highways to travel. In fact, I don't, I'm not sure anybody even travels to Abuja to Kaduna anymore. Mm. They will kidnap you. Yeah, the yeah. Even the trains, helicopter have to hover around them until they get until they get out. Mm. And then the big forest between Kaduna and Niger States. That is a mili a, 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 a bandit high haven. Completely, you know, I, I don't know. The security forces have to do enough, you know, to try to cop this. But it appears that their hands are tied, insufficient uh, troops to be able to tackle this because we know there's Operation Lafia Adoli on the mm -hmm. one hand, there's Turata Kabango in the in the sector too, then there's Zamfara. I mean, too much crisis, especially in not in this country. The so, military appears overwhelmed. So, what about the talk about the chief of staff saying that it would all come to an end pretty soon? Because that was what I read over the weekend. Well, when you motivate your troops, that's what you say to that's them. That's what you say to them. He was true. motivating troops when he arrived in UB sector two. Yeah. He was telling them the commander in chief knows what's going on and they should do the last push and end this. This will end very soon. But in reality, I know that he knows uh, it's not lip service. There's work to do. Over the weekend, troops were attacked. The army hasn't commented, but we hear that 15 soldiers were killed and ambushed. I mean, the National Security Advisor the other day blatantly told the BBC in our staff that money is missing, that a lot of money is released to purchase weapons, no equipment. There's no way to be he recounted before the end of the day. Wow. I saw his, the census statement to me before the end of the day. And when I read it, I know this is a recount. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm too experienced enough to know the statement. He was forced to write that because, yeah. again, and I had to go and listen to the BBC broadcast. And there was no difference between what he said before and what he, I mean, we, uh, what he was accused of saying. Yes. So you can see that there's some sort of, the new service chiefs have come and have seen nothing. And they have raised an alarm and the NSA has, has uh, uh, repeated what they have told him. Even though the government would not want that to go. I think there's a, there's a major problem around the politics of the military too, that we cannot comment on here, but it's happening. And I think to a large extent, that's what we're seeing. Of course, the NSA came back to say, that's not what he said. He said that the equipment has not arrived. We know that the, we know the two candles have not arrived, but others have been arriving. Mm -hmm. You know, others are supposed to have been arriving based on one billion dollars is what President Buhari released in 2018. One billion from the from the SS Food account. That money is to be paid some people because I don't understand. One billion dollars is a lot of money. Can you yeah, tell yeah, for what exactly was it used for? We'll be right back after this break. Yellow.